Hey everyone and welcome to part 2 of the tutorial on the point cloud connections with the GPU and in this video we're going to finish this patch so we're going to refine it a bit now first of all the first problem we got with the patches we left it last time with the algorithm is that once we make the threshold high few particles are going to connect all the other particles and this results in this kind of um, stars effect which is also kind of cool but it's it's not what i want to achieve okay so this is because the single particles are connecting to all the others so once the particle see that the particle next in line so exactly like if we have all the particles once they see that the particle next in line is close enough then the loop the for loop breaks and they're just going to connect to that particle right so in order to avoid that we can do one simple thing which is here inside our vertex shader it is to instead of starting our for loop from zero we can start it from the actual index of the particle we can find this value inside the constant gl vertex id which is provided to us by max itself so this means that uh, the particles are just going to start to check uh, from their own index so let's say that we are checking this particle this particle is going to check what uh, if it's close enough to all the other particles next in line but it's not going to check the particles that are uh, before its index all right so we could actually start by gl vertex index gl vertex id plus one because anyway we don't want to check this particle with itself so we could actually even remove this thing that the distance is greater than zero but let's leave it for the moment Right, so we are just going to check if this particle is close enough to the particles next in line. So this produces a slightly different effect. So once I save the shader and I make the distance threshold pretty high, you can see that we get a different result. We don't get this kind of edge hog effect anymore. Uh, the particles are never going to connect to the particles before them in line, so they're not going to connect to the same particles even if they are close enough. It's not going to happen because the for loop is going to check only starting from that particle and going onward. So this is a different effect that we achieve. Now, another thing that we want to do is that every single particle only connects to another particle because once we find a particle that is close enough, then we say break the for loops. So actually exit from the for loop. So this means that every particle is only connected with a, another single one. And we could say, for example, that we want a certain number of connections for each particle. So each particle could, for example, be connected to six other particles in order to have a bit more interesting result. So let's proceed and implement this thing. Cool. So what we got to do first, let's check how we are sending the particles to the geometry shader. We are putting the particle that is close enough inside this structure that we are sending them to the geometry shader and we are accessing this structure here and we are creating a line that goes from vertex 1 to vertex 2 and then we end the primitive so we emit the line. Now if we want to have more close particle positions we have to transform this into an array. So in order to transform this into an array it's going to be pretty easy. We just need to write here these square brackets and write inside how many uh, elements in this array we want to have. For example, we could have that every particle connects to other six particles. Cool. So we simply create an array with six elements inside. So this is now an array. It's not a single vector four anymore. This is an array of vector four. So first we need to initialize this array and we want to initialize it with the position of the particle. So in case there is no other particle close to, the, to our particle, this is just going to be a single dot. It's going to be represented as a single dot because a line that has no length is basically a dot. So we want to initialize all the elements in this array with the current position of the particle. So let's do it with a for loop. So for int i equal to zero, i less than six. And this is actually a constant. I believe we could maybe create a constant, something like that, const int array length and set it to six. I'm not sure this actually works because uh, maybe uh, it's not legal to declare an array length like this, but let's try. So in the for loop, we say i less than array length, and we say i plus plus, 
create a couple of brackets. And now we need to initialize that. So our JIT out close particle position with the position of the particle, but we need to access the single elements in the array. So we say JIT out close particle position, which is an array of array uh, of length, array length, which is six. We access every one of these six elements in the array and we set them to the position of the current particle transformed by the Volder view projection matrix. So cool. Now they are initialized. So let's actually write what is doing here. Initialize close particles position to this particle position. So then inside our for loop to check uh, if the particles are close enough, we need to do something like that. First, we need to create a counter because once we filled our um, six elements in the array, we want actually to break the for loop. So let's create a counter, let's set it equal to zero. And then inside our for loop, we want to say if the distance is less than the distance threshold and so on, we say again, close particle position counter, because we are count, we are indexing uh, the, this array using our counter, which is by default is zero. So the first element of this array is going to be equal to that. Then instead of breaking, we simply want to update our counter and sum to it uh, one. So it's going to increment of one. So now the counter is equal to one. So once we find six of these particles, we want to break. So if counter is greater or equal actually will be enough to say if it's equal but uh, let's say it's greater or equal than six actually we could use our constant which is array length so once our counter is greater or equal than the length of our array then actually break this for loop so break cool so now we we feel the six six position of particles that are close enough to the particle that we are currently processing and we're filling them inside this array that we are sending to the geometry shader. So inside the geometry shader we need also to transform this vector 4 into an array. Let's see actually we should copy this constant array length also inside the geometry shader here before we declare the input structure and say here array length. It's important that this uh, variable is a constant because a normal integer will not work. It must be a constant because uh, the array length cannot change dynamically um, when the program is executing, right? This is why it needs to be a constant. This is a special keyword in, in C and C++ and GLSL as well. So cool. Now inside our main function, we actually want to create our lines using a for loop so we don't do it anymore just once but we do it as many times as we decided with our array length so for i integer i equal to zero i less than and we can use our constant again array length i plus plus then we want to create a line that goes from our current position so the, the position of the particle we sent it from the vertex shader and then we want to check the elements of the array uh, that contains the close particles. So let's do like this. Close particle position i. So we're going to iterate through the array that contains the particle position that are close enough to that particle, emit vertex and then end primitive. And this closes our for loop. So we do it six times. We create six lines that go from the particle we are currently processing to the particle that are close to it. And this is it. So let's check if this is working or it's going to give me an error. Um, it's, it's, it doesn't give us any error, so it works with a constant integer. The problem is that it's not really doing uh, what it should. And that's because I realized that I didn't set the maximum vertices out as... Uh, uh, we want to now have as a maximum output, we want to have 12 vertices, right? Because six by two. So actually, as Rob Ramirez pointed out, we don't really need to say all this stuff. We just need to say program GP type geometry. We can just set here inside the shader itself the actual values. So max vertices is out to 12. And let's see if this actually works now. Oh yeah, now it's doing what I meant it to do. And as you can see, it's much cooler. Uh, we could also give to this um, GGL mesh like blend enable, which is pretty cool. 
depth enabled zero and so use the blend add and then if we reduce a bit the color then it we could get some nice effects so let's create a message with the color dollar one dollar one dollar one dollar one and let's simply use a float number to change a bit the the amplitude of this white and then we can get a nice uh, effect cool um now last thing i would like to do is to update the position of these particles dynamically, not creating actually a particle system, but simply using a, like a GPFG to make them move around. So we can do it very easily like this. Let's delete this JIT noise, let's create a GPFG. Three planes, floor 32, let's say we want to have 1000 position, uh, we need to give it two cells so also on the y axis and one cell on the third dimension because we want to offset on the third dimension. And then we want to create a JIT matrix to actually just get the first dimension with 1000 cells. And the number of cells could be also much greater, I just say 1000 because uh, um, this is kind of a nice number. But with this algorithm we can have uh, a lot of cells. So we don't need the JIT map anymore. Let's say that we want the basis noise simplex. We want this noise to be signed, so we got to send a load bang to a message set at basis sign one in order to make this noise signed. So it goes between minus one and one. And cool, then we need to offset it. So we can say offset zero, zero, dollar one, and then bang. We can actually use JIT mode time to create a continuously increasing number. So JIT mode time, let's reduce the speed to something 0.1, something like that. And cool. <laughs> uh, this is the result because we got to scale a bit of a noise. So let's scale it, scale 10, 10, 10. Cool. And it's starting to be interesting. We can also scale it a bit more in order to have a different uh, visualization. Yeah, something like this. And then we got to send the message again. So we got our particles floating in space, getting slightly connected. Let the, let's augment the distance threshold. Cool. That's neat. Can augment the color to make them more, more bright. We can augment the number of particles, so we could do something like that. So we got to set the dimension of this, we got to set the dimension of that. We can use an integer number to set the, how many particles we actually want to have. Let's try with 10,000. Cool. We got uh, scale then a bit also our noise again. Let's try also with 10,000. Okay, cool. And then we can uh, go and connect them. Oh, and of course, inside the shader, we should also change uh, the number, um, the iterations. So we could actually create a parameter to manually change the number of iterations. So we should do that. But for the moment, I'm just going to leave it manual, to change it manually. I'm going to give you as an assignment to change that number with a parameter. Cool. This is it. Let's try to scale it less. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty nice. Can have a lot of different uh, effects something like this is also pretty cool so yeah you can have a lot of fun with this i believe uh, i got i i have a lot of fun with it for sure so cool this was it uh, we're going to see in some future videos how to apply these to images for example how to recreate uh, connections between pixels in an image it's kind of a pretty cool effect kind of a standard effect but pretty nice and we are going to see some other cool effects that we can achieve with this uh, new algorithm which is actually pretty simple as you could see from the shader so great uh, thank you very much for following the video it would be great if you can put a like to the video and subscribe to the channel for more tutorials and if you want to support the channel and get access to a variety of patches you can check my Patreon channel where I share all my little creations. So thank you very much for watching and see you soon in the next one. Ciao, ciao.